Welcome to Europe PCR 2019. We're here in Paris and I'm together with AJ Kirtani from Colombia in New York and Michel Azizi here out of Paris. It's great to have you both for this round table discussion on renal denervation, renal denervation back on track, I guess. And uh, we wanted to discuss ultrasound renal denervation um, in this program. And I want to get your thoughts, Michel, on where we are with renal denervation now. What have we learned very recently with uh, respect to Radiant Solo, which is one of the most important trials that uh, had has been published. Thank you, Felix. Uh, uh, just to remember, uh, Radiant Solo was a randomized controlled sham design trial, which uh, randomized patients with hypertension, grade one to grade two, with or without antihypertensive drug, controlled or uncontrolled, who were off their medication during four weeks and then underwent the procedure. And the primary endpoint which was presented here last year at uh, Europe CR uh, was uh, the ambulatory blood pressure me measurement at two months after uh, the procedure. And uh, last year we reported uh, that uh, renal innovation with the, this ultrasound catheter lowered blood pressure uh, against the sham procedure. And the difference between the two groups was a meaningful difference of around six millimeters of mercury in the uh, intention to treat uh, analysis and around eight millimeters of mercury on, on treatment analysis. This, for this point, uh, demonstrated that renal innovation today has, can, we can say that it lowers absolutely blood pressure. So that's the proof of principle. Proof of principle, But absolutely. only part of the story. Yes. Because then after follow after a longer term follow-up, actually six months, the patients were backed up on medication. Can you say a few words about that analysis which you presented? Yeah, I think you know one of the unique attributes of the design of the study was that beyond just proving that renal denervation worked, um, what we wanted to see is that if you added medicines back, because we need to get patients under control. Not all patients were under control with just the denervation procedure or the sham especially. Um, but we wanted to add medicines back but maintain the blind. In other words, patients still maintain their original randomization medications were added back, and then we could assess at six months whether you needed less medications to treat the blood pressure in the denervation arm versus the control. And what we basically showed, and Michelle's the first author of this publication in circulation, you're an author on it as well as, well as many of the steering committee members and investigators, we essentially showed that the blood pressures went down in both arms because medicines were added back, but you needed less medications mm. to lower blood pressure in the denervation arm compared to the control, and if anything, the blood pressure was still a little bit lower nominally with denervation despite being on less blood pressure medications. So is that a proof that renal denervation lowers blood pressure in the absence but also in the presence of antihypertensive drugs? Can we say that? Yes, and uh, I think that the, this is a difference with a drug. You take a pill, you don't take the pill, the blood pressure lowering effect of your antihypertensive drug is, is vanishing. You are always on when you have had this uh, renal denervation. It seems from our data with a six month follow up that even if n renal gr uh, nerve growth regrowth reappeared, it didn't contribute too much to mm. something That's which could have uh, aspect, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, decreased the blood pressure lowering effect of renal denervation. We still see it but with a confounding effect of this addition of antihypertensive drugs. So to see the pure effect, it was very important to have this two months data without any antihypertensive drug. So this is why the, the trial was designed like this. I guess many of the uh, people who read the paper and listen to you guys talking about it question and, and wanted to get some thoughts about the clinical meaning of this fall in blood pressure. Is it is it enough? Is it what we would expect? Uh, we, we, we're talking about blood pressure falls of six to eight millimeters of mercury and ambulatory blood pressure. Is that clinical meaningful? You know, I think it is, and I think the reason is is twofold. One is that most uh, standards for drugs have looked at drops like this. But I think most importantly, what we see from these studies and others is that um, the drop in blood pressure is proportional to what your starting blood pressure mm. is. And these patients were sort of moderate hypertensives at baseline. Um, so if you're talking about refractory patients, patients with very elevated blood pressures, we would actually anticipate greater falls, and that's been seen not just with this device, but other devices as well. So we have now data in patients without medication. We have 
data on patients where we put them back on medication. What's coming next? What is the future? And what are the future studies for this catheter? I would like to add something which is very important is that we have three separate trials which are concordant uh, in terms of the results. This is very important uh, uh, to, to have a, a strong evidence that the renal innovation now lowers blood pressure. I, it's important that we close this debate because otherwise we cannot move on for new studies. So yes, you're perfectly right, Felix. There is a development program. We have ongoing studies, which is the TRIO, Radiance TRIO study. And TRIO means what? TRIO means that the patient uh, are under uh, antihypertensive treatment. They receive a triple uh, combination in one single pill. And those who are resistant to this triple combination of a diuretic, uh, an angiotensin II antagonist, and a calcium channel blocker are randomized to denervation mm -hmm. or the sham procedure. And again, it's a similar the design with two months with no change in the antihypertensive treatment and after two months, patient and uh, healthcare providers being maintained blind, we have uh, a treatment protocol adding mm -hmm. uh, the, the different antihypertensive treatments. So we have, uh, um, I think we, we hope to finish and to, to have our results in 2020. So uh, early 2020, we still need colleagues to send patients to be randomized to participate to the trial. There are other trials and uh, maybe uh, you can say a little bit uh, more for Radiance 2. Yeah, and actually there's also a trial going on in Japan and Korea that has resistant hypertensive patients, yes. also sham controlled. Um, so that would be three sham controlled trials plus a fourth one, which is Radiance 2, which is the pivotal trial for U.S. approval um, in 225 patients, really aiming to parallel the design of the solo trial, but to get more safety data. Because, you know, mm. this is something we've talked about, and I don't want to transition only to safety, but for the audience, you know, this is not prime time yet because we want to really demonstrate safety. And we hope that by 2020, uh, we'll have around 600 patients that are treated with this device with follow-up that's ongoing for a longer period of time so that we can can not only you know prove or reprove the efficacy question but to be assured of safety as well. Great so um, I'd like to summarize shortly what I've learned from you guys. First we have proof that real innovation lowers blood pressure. We have seen that it uh, maintains the blood pressure lowering over time even when we update trade drugs and we will have by end of next year 600 patients in randomized sham controlled trials that uh, would have been investigated with this catheter. So uh, that's a great future for this technology, hopefully. I'd like to thank you both for being with me and um, safe travels home. Thanks so thank much. Thank you. Yes.